hey, so this is 7th C set in the Crescent Empire. Uh, this is a source book for the new 7th second, C second edition, which if you say it a bunch fast and you have a little bit of that lisp in your thing, the syllablex, uh, it sounds weird. Uh, but uh, this is a great source book covering essentially in this, the world of Thea, um, the, the Middle Eastern analog um, and that Crescent Empire area. It's a wonderful source book written by Liz C., um, who has currently got a Kickstarter for her project, uh, Familiars of Terra, and it's a very cool game. You should check that out. Anyway, this is part of the Gauntlet Hangouts, uh, an online uh, role-playing group. We have about 100 games on the calendar just this month. Um, you can check us out at gauntlet-rpg.com. We actually got, uh, we have three players here. Uh, we're waiting on possibly a fourth that might be joining us because they're a little bit delayed. Um, so what I'm going to do is talk through with our players uh, about how 7th C works uh, mechanically. We're going to do a little bit of talk about that. I, I'm lucky enough to have Christo, who has played this. Victor, have you played the new 7th C or the old 7th no, C? I haven't. Okay. And Maria, have you? Uh, I played one game of Vanilla 7th C. Okay. Okay. Second edition. So this edition, yeah. All right. So uh, one of the things you'll note is on the People and Places tab, I've got a link there to a die roller. Now, unfortunately, this die roller doesn't do shared die rolling like our, our standard tool, um, but it does all the calculations. And I'll talk about why that's important. Mm -hmm. So when you go to do something, uh, there are, I would say, two basic kinds of tasks. Either you're trying to, to do something that has a risk that we're just kind of making a discrete roll for, and uh, you know you want to get a certain number of successes, and we're maybe kind of in a scene with you, we do that. Whenever there's a roll, there has to be a risk. Something has to be at stake. There has to be something that you have to deal with that's going to cost some of the successes to do. It's not just a roll to see whether you can do a thing. It's whether you can do a thing and overcome the potential obstacle. So when you make a roll like that, if I don't say what the risk is, you need to go, hey, is there a risk? Uh, and tell me what it is, Lowell. Um, because if there's not, then you don't need to roll because you guys are awesome. So you don't need to roll for those things unless there's something at stake, um, like time pressure, like a guard hearing you, uh, like the room's on fire, and you need to do the thing uh, before you get caught with the ceiling coming down. Um, and what that is, is we generate a certain number of successes. We spend those to avoid the problem and we spend them to do the thing. I'll talk about how we get successes in a second. The other thing that can happen is uh, multiple of you might be in a scene and we do a, an action sequence. Um, what that means is that everybody rolls, they get their number of successes and you spend them like a currency to do things in the scene. Uh, so uh, you'll get successes, you'll spend them. If we're in a combat sequence, then we actually use those number of successes to do initiative. So the person who has the most successes is going to go first. If there's a tie, bad guys go first. So I kind of like that. Basic roles all work like this. Uh, you tell me what you're going to do. And then we talk about what trait you think applies to that. You have five traits, brawn, finesse, resolve, wits, and panache. These are a little bit like approaches in Fate Accelerated because you can shape your description to, to fit with that. Um, so play to your strengths. Don't be afraid to do that. Um, on occasion, I may say, well, no, I think it's really this. And then we can negotiate. The other half of that, besides traits, are those skills. Um, and skills, uh, essentially, they have some broad area, but usually you're going to go, okay, I'm going to be doing this activity with this thing. Um, the first time that you use a skill in a scene, you get an extra die. So remember that. That's awesome. That's that's an extra die anytime. The first time you use it in a scene. Um, so if we go to the second round, you want to try and use a different skill. That way, you get that extra bonus die. Also, get a bonus die if you 
give me some description. Give me some flair. Tell me how you're doing the thing. Um, don't leave either of those dice on the table. You always want to get those dice from me. Okay. That's two potential bonus dice on every single roll. And how this works is you add your trait and your skill plus any bonus dice. And that's how many D10s you're going to be rolling. Um, and uh, if your skill rank is a three, you're going to get to re-roll a die. So your highest skill probably is going to allow you to re-roll one die on that roll. But the way this works is you go over to the 7C roller, that, that uh, link that I gave you. It's got, you put in your tray, you put in your skill, you put in any bonus dice, and then you hit roll. And it'll generate a bunch of, of D10 rolls. If you have a three in the skill, you can re-roll one of those dice if it shows it. I mean, if you put it up to a three, it'll show you it and it'll allow you to, to re-roll. It'll take the lowest one and re-roll it. And it may be good, maybe bad. So that's going to give you a bunch of numbers. I have a question. Absolutely. Uh, it says skill rank four sets of 15 equals two races. And that's relevant because I have a brown of four. Um, so what uh, that will do is, let me see here. If you put your skill of four in there, it will calculate it with that. Okay, it will calculate it automatically. Yeah, as long as you put that skill number in under skill, uh, it, okay. it brings that to bear. Now, where oh, did you right. say the uh, roller was? Uh, uh, the link is on that second tab. Uh, here, I'll drop the uh, link there. You got ninja. Um, so once you've got those rolls done, you've rolled all those numbers, put your trade in, put your skill in, put your bonus dice in, hit the roll. Uh, it will then, you'll hit the calculate raises bonus. Essentially, that goes through and makes sets of 10 out of your dice. And it does it in the most efficient way possible, um, uh, which is uh, faster than I would do it uh, if I were sitting looking at a table. Um, uh, and uh, it will say how many raises, that's how many successes you have to spend. It'll show you what the, the, the units are. And sometimes you'll have a die left over. Like, um, I'll show you here a screenshot of mine. So you can see my role here, I had uh, a two trait, uh, a three skill, and two bonus dice. I got this roll, three, five, five, seven, seven, eight, nine. I calculate the raises. I got three raises, but it only used six dice to do that. So I had one die left over. Mm -hmm. um, what you can do with that die is you can sell it to me. <laughs> GM would love for you uh, to offer me those extra dice. And for each one, you will get a hero point. Don't do it. Okay. Don't and it. a hero point is great uh, because you get to spend hero points to give yourself an extra die, or you can help somebody else out. When you help somebody else out with a hero point, they get three extra dice. How awesome is that? Now, there is a side effect when I buy your dice that the GM gets danger points to use against you, but I really wouldn't worry about that. That, that won't be an issue. It's not like as they go up in number of danger points that I have that certain effects trigger. Oh, wait, no, actually, it is that way. Um, so you want to uh, you want to not pay any attention to the number of danger points that I have. All right. Uh, Tejas, how are you doing? Uh, I'm all right. <laughs> OK. No, I'm, I'm good. I... OK. Uh, Open my let me goes down to a low moan sometime soon. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, so we got the we're in the folder. Uh, I was walking them through the roller. Um, I'll walk you through that when we when we get to that uh, place here. Um, it looks like if you want, uh, you may have the sorcerer. I uh, right. noted. Is that cool with you? Yep. Yep. Okay. I'm good.
So we'll get you into that sheet. Um, Although I'm not great with uh, evocative Middle Eastern names. Ah, uh, in the folder now, in the big folder, I've put oh. uh, the, a list that's taken from the book of names. Ah, okay. I see. If I just added that. That makes it sound like we're all predestined. If we choose from your book of names, that we all have <laughs> oh, yeah. fates. Edmund Yabe's his great poetry on the the dedication to that. Uh, uh, yeah, you could be, or you could go with the roller and 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 live dangerously with fate. Um, the other important detail I want to mention to you uh, 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 is how you get. Uh, hero points. Uh, you'll notice that you have a couple of quirks for your characters. Uh, when you play those out, you get a hero point. You can spend your hero points to activate your virtue. Or, sorry, sorry. I actually, you can activate your virtue uh, uh, once per session is what it is. You don't have to spend anything for that. Um, uh, and the hubris that you have is another way to get hero points. I think everybody here starts with one hero point. So you're starting with just that base one. Um, damage, uh, you'll see uh, running along the right hand side of your character uh, is a little track with a bunch of O's and then an at sign. Uh, that's your hit points. Those are your wounds. Um, whenever you take one of a wound, you'll change that O to an X. Uh, whenever you hit that at sign, that's a dramatic wound. Uh, that's a bad wound. That's a, that's a stage of you getting hurt. Dramatic wounds are harder to clear. Um, and uh, the first time you get a dramatic wound, the first one, you get a bonus die to all your rolls. Look at that. That's great. Second time, uh, the villains all get two bonus dice to all their rolls. Um, I was going to say, you sound a little too enthusiastic about that. But the third dramatic wound, all your all your tens explode, meaning that you can roll them again. So look at that. I mean, you're losing money not going to three wounds. Um, at, at dramatic wound four, you're helpless. Uh, but don't worry about that part. Uh, the, so just just uh, keep that in mind. The guns, sorcerer has. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Uh, uh, let me say one more thing. If someone shoots you with a gun, they will always do a dramatic wound to you. Guns are dangerous. Uh, people have, have rifles and pistols. If you have a rifle or a pistol, you will always do a dramatic wound when you shoot a bad guy. Um, so keep that in mind. Victor, I interrupted you. No. Uh, somebody else was going. Oh, who did I interrupt? Me. I, Actually, I was going to I was gonna say, except for the, sor the sorcerer has some tricky moves related to uh, dramatic injuries, doesn't it? Let's see here. Cast Iron Heart. Da, 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 da. Hardy, Reckless Takedown, Cabernet, Sorcery, Calm. Uh, Where did I see it? I thought there was something. Upper Darkness, Dawning Revelation. Uh, oh, maybe I was wrong. I thought it was them. They have something, though, that, that if they die, um, they don't really die. Yeah, uh, um, who was oh, there? Hubris Doomed. That's it. Activate That's right. Hubris when you take one more or more dramatic wounds. You gain a hero point for each dramatic wound you just endured. And then Virtue Tenacious. Activate your virtue when you would be killed. Through some twist of fate or circumstance, you survive, but are immediately and forcibly removed from the scene. Yeah, so those are kind of awesome. Yeah, I know. That's what That was like what really drew me first to the sorcerer. But I figured I'd just... I want to be a thief. I want to get everybody else into trouble, and then you can all rescue okay. me. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so it, it's cool. Uh, does anybody have any questions about the mechanical bits, uh, advantages, or or skills, or anything on the sheet? What something means? A lot of this we're going to find out in play. Um, but is there anything that you're like, uh, I have no idea? Do we get all of the advantages that are on the character sheet? Yes. How awesome is that? Boy. Get all of those. You're going to forget some of them. I'm going to tell you that yes. right now. Yeah. Um, I I completely believe you. Don't worry yep. about that. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, don't count on me to, to remind you. So, uh, but uh, like like Rich went through like half a session before realizing he was leaving three dice on the table every time he was fighting. So, 
Um, Wait, there are... when would you, you, oh, brawling get, brawling is not just, uh, um, what's it called? Is brawling just uh, hand to hand combat or is it like, does it include swords and shot and shit? No, brawling is hand to hand combat uh, with uh, fists, uh, broken chair legs, uh, broken oh, bottles, okay. uh, uh, all of that kind of thing. It is it is nasty, dirty. It is not not sword play at all. Uh, you have the advantage that you've been trained in in unarmed yeah, combat. I know. That's why I was confused when I say when I saw a boxer, but but then again, it's like, oh, okay, I can. Yeah. As long as I don't use chairs, I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can you can use those for brawling, but uh, uh, the but for anything, the... anything more severe, it's it's weaponry. Yeah. Ah. Okay. I see. Um. Right. Any other questions? Yeah. One more. Okay. It's been a while since I've done hangouts. Have they completely destroyed the uh, lower third? Bye bye, lower third. As of three weeks ago, it was working. And it was working oh, great. Big. It was working such that I could use it, and I'd never been able to use it. Oh. And then they were like, "That's too much functionality for LOL. Let's take the whole thing away." It makes Rich it so actually, nice Rich to be actually able to shed a little tear. So it's crazy, um, I, but but they've actually. It looks like they're working on it, so maybe we're going to get that yeah. that back at some point. It looked newer. Yeah. What are reputations of what and what do they what do I put in there? Uh, uh, reputations uh, would be uh, uh, describe when people what they've heard about you. Um, you know that you're honorable, uh, that you're vicious, uh, that you're kind-hearted. Uh, everybody starts with one reputation you get to define, um, and you can you can leverage that in social situations. Okay. What and. Is there a list of reputations or do I just make one up? Just make one up. Okay, cool. Uh, question about the roller. Is that link somewhere in the folder or was that in the chat and I missed it? Uh, it's it's actually uh, on the peoples and places. Uh, uh, it's, 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 and I've, I've also dropped it in the... Oh, I'll copy and put this in. Thing. It's at the bottom um, of the character sheet also, right under my character. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's not our standard roller. It is a roller for this game, uh, which means that you can't see other people's rolls, but it does all the calculations for us. So when you have to roll, we'll, we'll stop and we'll, we'll walk through that, that process of doing it. Um, the basic drill is that it's a skill plus a trait. Gives you a number of dice. Uh, you can get some bonus dice to that. You're rolling a bunch of d10s, and then you pair those up into sets to make uh, at least 10 in a set, and that gives you how many successes you get. Yeah, which are I'd called read through the rule stuff earlier in the week, so okay. I think I'm pretty solid on the dice mechanic. Good. Um, Although right. I was sad to see no uh, rank four and rank five. I guess that's later on in the campaign. That is that is later on. I th I think. Uh, I think I'm looking at things. I don't think anyone has a a four in a skill. I have a four. In, oh, in a skill? No, I don't. Yeah, no, you have it in a trait. Oh, okay. It's in a skill specifically that you have to, so that the it becomes a set of fifteen, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. If you, um. So so that's that's a good goal to to strive towards. Um. So uh. What I want to do is I want to do a little preliminary talk about let's do the cat setup, talk a little bit about the setting, about what the, the current events are. Um, and then uh, what I want to do is uh, talk to each of you about who your character is. Um, and we'll fill in some gaps maybe on on your story in a bit. We're going to gonna figure that out. What we're going to do is we're going to do kind of a collaborative building of a villain and talking about how you guys met, figuring out what your present story is and where that puts us uh, uh, in the world. So uh, let me talk about cats real quick. Uh, this is a heroic swashbuckling game. Uh, uh, you are heroic swashbucklers saving the day in a fantastic Middle East. Um, uh, 
uh, this this is you know you are our heroes in the the that mold. You follow that call to heroism, um, even though you may have some dark secrets and a dark past. Uh, you are the good guys. Um, uh, you you don't kill people unnecessarily. You don't torture. Um, uh, all of those things. You give villains a, f a fair chance um, before you, you cut them down. Um, uh, all of those things that imply the, the heroic code. Um, um, what we're trying to do here is, of course, trying to have fun. We're trying to develop these characters. And we're also kind of trying to take a tour of this setup. Uh, this is you know, a really interesting approach to a Middle Eastern uh, analog game. Um, we've seen those in the past. Uh, uh, we've seen that uh, with Al Qadim. We've seen that with uh, uh, the uh, 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 GURPS Arabian Nights. There, there are a lot of different fantasy analogs. Um, I like this one a lot. Um, what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about tone. I've kind of talked about heroic things. Uh, uh, on the table, that's that's my imagining of what what I I picture the tone. Um, but I want to check in with you. Are all of you good with that? Is there anything you want to see or not see? Definitely on the table. Um, kind of include the lines and veils in there. Um, any strong feelings on that, Victor? Uh Nothing really comes to mind other than like your your typical uh, uh, abusive children can't do okay. any of that. All right, it's kind of off the off the table. That seems fair. Tejas, the, se the setting and everything sounded cool. So. Tejas, anything on on your end? Um, the. Only thing I was going to say is that uh, in terms of religion, I feel like religion is so hard-baked into most non-U.S. cultures, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but because this is fantasy stuff, I just don't know what the religions are. And I want to be able to refer to it, but I don't want to screw it up. You oh, know no. what I mean? Yeah. I, I think, so I'm not sure. I think he I think went over it before he came in. Yeah, oh, I'm um, sorry. Well, and, and, I'll, and I'll, once I get done with the the tone, th this this cat thing, I'll, I'll actually go through quickly and, and give another talk about that because I think that's worth worth uh, uh, dwelling on. Um, so that's a good point, uh, Maria. Anything? Nope. Christo. Okay. Um, this is our our subject matter is fantasy, swashbuckling, heroism. We've got good and bad magic. Uh, we've got different cultures joining together. Um, uh, we've got touring the world. Those, that's all the subject matter. Regarding this being a real-world analog, a historical, um, I want to talk a bit about that. One, uh, though my background is in Arabic um, and uh, uh, Middle Eastern studies, I am terrible at pronouncing things. So uh, uh, I will pronounce it one way. Do not think that that is, in fact, the way that it is pronounced in the, the book. Um, Liz C has done a very careful job of putting pronunciations in there, but I'm from the Midwest and I'm an American, so we ignore these things. So there you go. Um, one of the big challenges for dealing with other cultures is the question of Orientalism. Uh, there was a great piece uh, that Fraser and Christo shared today talking about depiction of other cultures in fantastic literature. Um, uh, I, my goal here is to, uh, where this is an analog for real world things, treat it with respect. I think it's really cool that this leans into, uh, uh, sophisticated characters, um, for, you know, from within their culture. It feels like a game that's written to have the heroes be from within it rather than people coming in from the outside. Um, but it is a fantasy game. So there will be fantastic elements and there will be the exotic, which is always a problem. But I'm going to try and treat it respectfully. If at any point you guys are like, oh, that seems a little, little hanky. Can we not have the magic like flying carpet lull um, or, or any of that, you know, really uh, uh, horrible stereotype stuff? 
um, feel free to say something about that. And, uh, I, you know, I'll keep an eye out. Um, another thing I want to say is that there are several religions represented in the game. Um, uh, the, the main one is Dinist. That is the analog for the Islamic faith. In no way is it Islam. It is not. Um, in no way is, are any of these faiths that are fantasy faiths here, uh, uh, you know, the, the real world version. The Vatican Church is not the Catholic Church in Thea. Um, but I just want to make that clear. Is they, they're, they have a feel of it, but they are definitely not it. Uh, so I want to put that on the table. The main faiths are that, that we have represented in our group uh, are uh, the Dinist, which is this classic Islam. Uh, 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 it is about the, the second prophet. It is about hospitality. Uh, it uh, is a, about uh, uh, essentially uh, giving yourself over to the will of the higher power, uh, doing those things in, in benefit for the community. Um, uh, there are, are different times of prayer. And of course, there are, are different obligations uh, like like generosity, like going on a pilgrimage, um, very much that. The Orthodox faith uh, is a kind of a weird one. Um, it follows the first prophet of the three in the, the Theian universe. Um, it is uh, much more of a kind of uh, Gnostic or even uh, apophatic, uh, uh, you know, uh, Eastern style faith. Um, the Orthodox Church is actually in this world up in the sort of the Russian analog as well. Um, in a particular area where we have uh, uh, the Orthodox from uh, in uh, Ashur, that's a place with a lot of different faiths, different splinter sects of Orthodoxy, um, believing very different things. Um, the uh, uh, I'm going to say this again, Christo. Uh, Aharanyazna, Aharanyazna uh, is a animist faith in some ways. It is a little bit like Zoroastrianism. Um, it has uh, the old gods. Uh, it has uh, the the figures of the the angels and the devas and the devils and the jinn. And it's very much a classical um, uh, belief in those powers and worship of those, those powers in this world. Um, as such, uh, it's an older faith that was sort of overcome uh, uh, like orthodoxy by the, the Dinists. Uh, finally, uh, we have uh, Yachidi, and uh, that's the analog for Judaism uh, in this. Uh, they're the people of the book. Uh, they have a high temple. The temple has been destroyed. Uh, that uh, Sarmion uh, in this world is the analog for sort of the Holy Land. Um, so those are the faiths. Um, and, uh, you know, they will, will come into play uh, in the terms of, of other people being of those faiths and that being a, a thing there. I won't dwell too much on, on the full rituals of those things, but, uh, but where they're, they're possible to kind of take a look at them, we'll try and do that. Um, uh, so for, for your benefit, uh, uh, Tejas, uh, Antol Ah, that nation is the biggest nation of the empire. Uh, it's the sort of the most classic uh, Middle Eastern analog. Uh, uh, if you picture uh, a classical medieval uh, uh, Islamic uh, culture, it's that. Ashur is weird. It's got those Orthodox faiths. It's got a bunch of pacifists in it, and it also has the assassins. Uh, in particular, you are of that. Um, you are not a full assassin, but uh, you are a person that is trained in some of those arts. You have a choker necklace. Um, and that choker necklace has all of your deaths. And that's not deaths of other people, but it's your deaths. When an assassin goes up to, to be trained by this divine figure... Uh, they they are put through mo many, many deaths so that they can know what it's like for someone to die and respect that. It's a, it's a transformative process. Uh, as, as a mage, 
uh, you have this to kind of mark and tie into your powers. And if you do kill someone, uh, you will unknot uh, a piece of that choker. It's wrapped around in multiple layers with multiple knots. Uh, so that's sort of the symbolic uh, piece of that. Uh, there's a real tension in Ashur between the assassins and the violence and the the sort of pacifists and the weird orthodoxies down below. Uh, when you say, if I kill somebody, you mean as a contract, as an assassin, or do you mean like even in like, we're being attacked, but I had to actually take a life in order for us to get away, that counts? Whenever you take a life, uh, okay. in, in, for any reason. Um, the, it's sort of a, a respect for that. Uh, it's tied to a, a mystic figure there. Okay, so he's not exactly a pacifist, but he's very aware of when he needs to go to that length. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Uh, uh, Persis is Persia. Classic uh, uh, Iran, um, uh, pre-Islamic uh, Iran. Uh, the naming conventions are that. The, uh, um, the Umayyad, am I getting that right? Dynasty is very much of that. Um, uh, it's it's that sort of classic person. They have the the sort of the, the figurative masks, um, uh, and the design, as you can see, has has that sort of feel to it. Uh, Sarmion is the Holy Land, and then the Eighth Sea is sort of the Arabian Peninsula, um, and all the tribes there. All of that is important in this regard. Uh, uh, Antal I kind of rules the empire. It is an empire. They are joined together. They all are p part of the empire, but there's tensions. In particular, just a few years ago, uh, the emperor of Anatol I, the emperor of the whole thing, uh, was overthrown and deposed. Um, and he was overthrown and deposed because he was terrible. Um, he uh, uh, treated his subjects badly. Uh, he uh, uh, worked people to death. Uh, he was uh, determined to hunt down anyone who possessed sorcerous powers and have them killed. Uh, he reinforced uh, the system of divisions of the classes. Um, his name is, was Istani, and uh, he, he was terrible. Uh, and his sister... Uh, 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 Sophia uh, returned from uh, uh, overseas uh, and uh, with the aid of uh, Sarmian uh, and some others uh, broke into the palace and deposed her brother um, and uh, Istani uh, fled into the Eighth Sea, into the desert and no one has heard from him since. Uh and since this change has occurred, and I mean, fairly recently, within the last year and a half, two years, um, uh, uh, Sophia has instituted major changes of policies. She has rescinded the ban against sorcerers. She says that sorcerers are, are part of the, the order. They are not to be maltreated. That's gained her some support, but also other people are very nervous about that because some sorcerers track with infernal powers. Um, they are still to be taken care of and, and removed, but there's all that there's sort of deep suspicion. She has also moved to dismantle the caste system in various places uh, to uh, remove slavery as an institution in uh, certain portions of the empire. Um, so she has made some fairly large social changes. Um, so she's pretty popular within her own home country, though there are forces that uh, move against her. Um, uh, Ashur is very much neutral. Uh, Ashur kind of stays out of things. Uh, people don't invade Ashur, and Ashur doesn't doesn't go out. Uh, uh, it's it's an isolated, bountiful country. Uh, Persis, they kind of hate the new empress. Uh, the, the Shah who rules Persis uh, was uh, to be wed to uh, the uh, emperor Istani. Uh, they were lovers. Uh, they were to be wed. And essentially, just before that wedding was to take place, uh, he was, uh, uh, Istani was deposed. 
And so the present Shah of Persis is super polite uh, and super controlled, but he he hates the Empress. Um, and it's pretty clear that that will be a problem in the future. Um, he has turned even colder and more awful uh, since Istani was deposed. Uh, Sarmian uh, aided the Empress, helped the Empress. Uh, uh, it deposed the, the, uh, this, this uh, horrible uh, force on the throne, but they suffered greatly. Uh, about half of their people vanished. Uh, after that, uh, a number of the tribes of Sarmian just vanished. They're gone. No one knows what happened to them. Um, they suffered greatly, and they have not yet come back from that. As well, in the fighting, some of their people uh, essentially used forbidden sorceries to make themselves into uh, uh, living stone warriors. And that was forbidden magics. It was not to be used except in the most desperate of circumstances. And they, they use this and they have been stuck in that. So uh, there are, are, are essentially wa magic warriors there who are not being treated well by their people. Um, and then the eighth C, uh, whoever pays the best, whoever gives them what they want, whoever deals with them best is who they're going to support. They supported Istani. They'll support the new empress. That's not to say that the eight sea tribes are a monolith. There are three major tribes that are competing with one another, um, but they are uh, a, a figure that uh, uh, is given to to different allegiances depending on the way the wind blows. Any questions about that setup? Okay, now I'm going to ask you about your characters. I'm going to get that on the table. And we're gonna, gonna gonna weave our tails together. I am going to start from uh, the left leftmost. I have to do this, by the way. I hate to say this. I always have to do want to do left and right, and I still get it wrong. Um, so I don't want to play an MMO with me because um, I will tell you to go right, and I will run left. Uh, so let's start with Maria. Maria, um, tell us about your character, what what their name is, and how you are picturing them. So. My character's name is Zeb Ben Chaim Meshevet Ram. He is a uh, a boxer slash physiker from Sarmian. Okay. He is Yahidi. Um, so he's a doctor and a pugilist. I don't know how to mix those two together, but that sounds hella awesome. So. Uh, his story, his goal seems to be to obtain lost secrets, which so he seems like this sort of archaeologist type figure as well as being a doctor, as well as being a pugilist. So we'll see what what. So and, so uh, <laughs> what do you imagine they look like? I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure. Still thinking about that. Yeah. Do you imagine that they were a pugilist first and then became a doctor or that they're a doctor and they're still a pugilist? How, how do you imagine that, that that came about? I think they were a pugilist, became a doctor, but he's still, but he's still being a pugilist somehow. Okay. Um. And you've got a good, strong focus in athletics and brawl, so you're a good, good character that way. Uh, tell us about your, your virt virtue and your hubris. So my virtue is humble, and my hubris is arrogant. I don't know how those two make sense together, but okay. Uh, I guess that's that. Yeah, uh, uh, what I, I made sure I gave people uh, both their virtue and hubris from the same arcana uh, with the idea that, that you... You're kind of torn between those things that you move between them. So you can choose how you want to uh, act in a particular scene based on that. Yeah, maybe your goal is to be humble, but every once in a while your arrogance just comes shining through. All right, that makes That's sense. Nice. Uh, oh, and I was thinking in terms of mixing the uh, doctor and the fighter. What if it was kind of like the Robert Downey, 
Sherlock Holmes, like you are a doctor to be a better fighter. You know, you know, the anatomy, yeah. you know, the weaknesses. It was something that you undertook and then, you know, now it's like a knowledge, but it's part of your fighting. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Or you've nice. gotten injured a lot and you just had to learn how to take better care of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you imagine that you're you're short, tall? Um, medium height. Okay, go gonna go for the medium. Okay, I'm not gonna commit lol. Uh, all right. Um, we'll come back to that. You can look through the 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 that Pinterest board and see if anybody there uh, appeals to you uh, as as I good. Need to, I need good to actually go to the Pinterest board. Can you okay. link it? <laughs> Yeah, let me grab that uh, up real quick here. Um, let's see here. I love Pinterest, uh, but I also don't like how if you look at at, at anything odd, uh, Pinterest will then serve that to you up on a platter for the next uh, uh, yep. next million years. Yep. Do not look for surfer dudes. That's yeah. That's, <laughs> And it's not going to be what you think it's going to be. It's like I was right. looking for a character that was a surfer dude, and oh no! <laughs> there you go. I dropped uh, the, the link in the smart. chat. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so that gives us sense. Uh, I'm going to come back to you and talk about uh, your story here in a sec. But I want to get a sense of of our our group as a whole first. Um, so let's uh, uh, talk next to you, Christo. Tell us about uh, Roshan. Okay. Roshan Navid Alinyad is a hunted rebel turned tomb raider. Um, you know, he thinks of himself as just liberating artifacts so that the world can share them and have them. Uh, let's see. So he, oh, and his reputation, I decided his reputation is he's an incurable romantic. Ah. So, but that doesn't mean that he's always hitting on people. That means he loves love stories also so it can be that he wants to support somebody else's relationship if he sees it because he just thinks that's the best thing um he is he ascribes to the ahura, ahura yasna uh religion so i guess we're saying that's animistic uh so that to me it implies that it's it's seeing a lot of say spirits in the world around him and in the the land uh, in addition to the jinn and the the angels i guess you were saying so i'll play up to that uh, let's see. His virtue is that he's wily, uh, which he can use to escape from a scene. His hubris is he's curious. So he's he'll get hero points for doing when I investigate something unusual, especially if it looks dangerous. So yeah, I'm going to be your rainmaker, I think. Yeah, there you go. Um, and let's see what else would be of interest. I hunger for rare trinkets, lost artifacts, or similar treasure, and that will get me into trouble, but get me hero points. Mm -hmm. So I also like that other quirk that you have. Oh yes, when you tell someone in authority exactly what you think of him, and I noticed the way you said him in this particular case, yeah. even when you really shouldn't. Um, so yeah, so this uh, this character has a lot of potential to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, ah. he has good relationships with other characters because he's probably going to need people to bail him out. Uh, and you, your character, it's got a, a strong aim, mm -hmm. and we've got uh, the uh, dead eye uh, uh, for you as a, a, an ability. So, do you imagine that as like a, a bow, a crossbow, knives? What do you think? Hmm. Let's see. It can only be one. <laughs> no, no. I, 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 are you are are you a jack of all trades for that? Well, I'm picturing him having knives because if you're going to be a thief, having a knife is a really useful thing to have with you. Um, probably a knife and a pistol. Okay. That sounds good. And you've got some great thief skills. Mm -hmm. Got it. Slip free are both really awesome for, for getting into and out of places. Um, so uh, what do you imagine uh, made you a rebel? Um, mm, that's a good question. That's are you are you a question. rebel against the empire, or are you rebel against the authority in Persis? What do you what do you imagine? Well, I guess it depends. Where are we? Are we in Persis, or are we someplace else? We will be someplace else. Okay, then it wouldn't be a rebel against 
Oh, wait, I'm a Persic Rebel. Um, yeah, yeah so I get left. Why don't we say Persic people to put pursuing you? That's a sure. Why don't we do that? So that's you know he's left his country. He was a rebel there, and and maybe he was stealing treasures to fund the you know the rebellion there. That makes sense. And you would have an appreciation for Persis in L other places. A lot of the the old places are there to keep a spirit held away, to keep them trapped, and things like that. So you know how to deal with those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, got good three and theft. All right, and I like your picture there. Um, let me move on then uh, to to Victor. Victor, tell us about uh, uh, Mus Musina. Okay, so uh, Musina bint Pinar is a uh, yeah, it says former pioneer turned scout. Probably a uh, was kind of a uh, uh, reluctant pirate, probably. Uh, and then uh, yeah, I think kind of a, a reluctant pirate, and and now that that she's back on land, more or less, um, has taken kind of some of those sneakier skills or whatever and, and applied them to um, scouting trade, kind of uh, probably a uh, kind of a guide type character. Uh, Let's see, what do we have for some of the other things here? Tell us about your uh, quirks and arcana. Yeah, that's where I was headed. Um, quirks. Um, so earning a hero point for putting my eyes upon uh, uh, sites few, if any, have seen. So kind of sneaking in, looking at uh, kind of... Uh, discovery type uh, attitude uh, getting into where she's never been before just because she's never been there before uh, and uh, make a personal sacrifice to ensure freedom of another so I see kind of a yeah self-sacrificing kind of thing uh, probably uh, well yeah it's kind of that's kind of it. And then uh, Arcana is humble and timid. Okay. Um, I think she probably kind of struggles with that. I think that, okay. I think those are things she struggles with. Uh, she doesn't want to be timid. And it's just kind of how she's been fit into society from family at one point and from uh, being on a pirate ship at one point, or pirates, however they they kind of fit in the world. Uh, so, kind of never being the outspoken character, uh, and it just kind of it just kind of nags because it's like I, I could say something here. I should probably say something here. I think uh, I'll wait. I'll say something a little later. I'll, I'll pull them aside and say something. I notice you've chosen diligent as your uh, reputation. H how has that come about? Um, having to kind of keep my nose to the grindstone, kind of uh, 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 more of a not be in the wrong place when trouble may be coming around. So keeping yourself busy, uh, learning to hone skills so you can make yourself worth something to the group you're with okay. okay that sounds good and uh what do you imagine that they look like um really kind of well i've got a picture on the on the second tab there oh let me go look um uh, so really kind of an earthy uh uh dress kind of simple and basics and just what's practical, what what works, that kind of that kind of look. 
So we have a character who is a a, a skilled pirate, an explorer, but but kind of kind of keeps quiet about the fact that she's done all these amazing things. Well, probably that side of it, and probably keeping quiet about all the not so nice things that she's had to do. All so right. a little of both, kind of okay. keeping the tongue, keeping the tongue under control. I like it. I like it. Um, all right, uh, let's go to our last character, uh, uh, Malco. Let's hear about you. Okay, uh, Malco Benu uh, Habubati. He is from the city of High uh, Habubati. I think that's he said it. Um, and being, you know, an Ashuri, he's kind of come from the. Uh, side of training where death is seen as a necessary thing. Um, he's not really like a you know death cultist or death worshiper or anything like that. Uh, you know, it's it's very much that's his job. Uh, and his kind of passions are more in the seeking out of knowledge, but his tendencies are to be a little bit. Uh, I, I I don't want to say cerebral, but like he always has to think about how he's going to plan something. Under his reputation, I have calculating less yet brash. Uh, what I mean by that is that he always has a plan, but the plan doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, mean he's not going for the least reckless thing. It just means that he's thought through the way that he's being reckless. All right. Um. He, uh, and I think that's why for his arcana, his uh, hubris is doomed. He has a tendency to take his injuries in stride and use them uh, to do his crazy antics, but his virtue is uh, tenacious when his plans go awry and, uh, you know, he falls off that cliff that everybody assumes is going to be the end of him. He found that route and later on comes crawling back with yet another plan. Um, as a sorcerer, this is actually a question I had for you. Sure. Um, does magic mean that he can do a lot of different magics, like just narratively, descriptively, or are the things under sorcery, the Nawaru, are those like the things that he can do with magic? Generally, the way uh, sorcery works in here is those are the things that you can do. Those are the gifts. Um, okay. You can, can certainly add those, uh, uh, add things as trappings or fiction okay. uh, to, to actions. Okay. Um, yeah, I would say that he probably doesn't come across just in appearance as a sorcerer. It's more like he probably comes across as somebody of his sect and then being a sorcerer just turns out to be his means to that end. Uh, and you've got a nice thing in that you've got a cover name. You can decide that at mm -hmm. any point you want during play. You don't have to assign that uh, at the beginning. Okay. Um, and we've got that nice picture that we've got for you. Um, oh, do we have a different picture? No, no. I was saying the the one that you picked out uh, is particularly. Uh, oh no! Wait, let me see here. No, we don't have that's that's Zev's. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, I like have that. the picture that I'd like to use. I'm just trying to figure out how to copy it. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can save it to your uh, computer. Okay. Uh, with a right click, and then you can uh, uh, upload it uh, to the sheet. Okay, I got it. All right. Uh, I want to say one last thing mechanically for your thinking before I, I kind of move to figuring out where everybody is. Um, when you go to do something uh, and, you know, declare your actions, again, if you give us flair, you describe what, it, what you're doing, you get a bonus die. Uh, if it's a if it's a skill you haven't used as a scene, you get a bonus die. The other thing I want to say to you is, uh, when you're fighting like a brute squad or a villain, weaponry is not the only thing that does damage. Uh, you tell me 
how your athletics is is doing damage or unbalancing the 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 mooks. You tell me how you're intimidating them. Um, when you're when you're trying to stop a foe, uh, anything's on the table. Uh, weapons are more obvious. Fighting is more obvious. Uh, duelist styles are more obvious. But you have options um, uh, to to be awesome. So so keep that in mind. So uh, we are here uh, in the this uh, land uh, in the Crescent Empire. I'm getting a little bit of echo. I think from somebody. It might be from you, Jay. Just. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, and we are going to start by defining our villain. Uh, who our villain is that we're going to be dealing with. Uh, we've tangled with them before. They're a foe we're going to be pursuing. And we're going to connect them in to the stories that each of you has as your experience story. So we're going to figure out about that. So, Christo... I'm going to start with the, the most basic question. I'm going to go along my little little thing here. Is your villain a man or a woman? Maybe or we don't know. Else. Yeah, maybe we don't know. Maybe it's a master of disguise. Oh. They're a master of disguise, and they've been... We've seen them as men or women or... Okay. Master of disguise. So So we don't know anything about their appearance they could could appear as as anything okay uh i i like that uh maria yes uh what do you imagine is like this villain's forte are are they kidnappers uh are they murderers are they thieves or are they you know masterminds what what do you imagine will be I think uh, they, the, this, they gather information for the mastermind. Uh, information for mastermind. Do you think you know who that mastermind is, or is that still an open question? Uh, it's still an open question. Okay. Gather info for the mastermind. Tages. Uh... This villain, this uh, uh, ambiguous master uh, uh, information, a spy master who has done this, how is it that you crossed paths? But before this, this session what was like the, the first encounter that you had with this bad guy, with this villain. Um, I think that uh, he did not act on his own, but since my story is to track down the traitor, there was uh, somebody who was in my sect, somebody who had been brought in, and we were uh, given an assignment. And uh, I'm assuming that my sect has enough people in it that I don't necessarily know every single person. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I was on this team of people and long story short it turned out that this one individual i did not know was actually a plant the villain had found out that we were undertaking this mission that would have thwarted some aim of his and so he put in this uh agent who was masquerading as one of us and it ended up uh you know causing not only the failure of the mission, but the deaths of some of my brothers. And so I have three knots on my necklace that I say are my deaths, but are really, you know, the deaths of my close-knit, uh, you know, brothers that I used to be part of a team, and now I am kind of more wandering in search of a team because of that. And so he needs to be paid back for that action. In the greater awesome. scheme, the villain needs to pay, but specifically this guy, this agent of his, okay. needs to be brought forth. Um, so uh, uh, we've got somebody who was was uh, aided to uh, getting in there. Uh, that's the agent you want to find, um, and you want to want to uh, dispatch them quietly. Okay, that that works for me. Um, uh, Mus Musina. Um, this master of disguise, this villain, uh, uh, 
is part of the reason why you're no longer a pirate. Mm -hmm. uh, what's that story about? Um, I think something happened with, um, or probably caused by the villain uh, that caused uh, trouble with the the whole crew. Uh, and I think when everything, kind, when the dust settled, the whole crew had scattered. Uh, and in in that, my my goal on my uh, my story here is to rescue rescue former captain. So I need a name for that, but from the villain. So my my assumption is I've been tracking some of these former crewmates down because I really want to find my captain, and I think she probably had a connection with that captain, and uh, uh, really wants to kind of find them and maybe uh, see what's going on, get back together that kind of thing. Uh, probably a relationship between the two. Okay. But everything's kind of pointing to where's the captain? And the only thing I can figure is the villain's got the captain. Excellent. Uh, let's come back to uh, uh, Roshan. Uh, what's the story of heartbreak for you related to this? You're a you're an incurable romantic. Mm -hmm. Surely, there has to be a a terrible, tragic, lovelorn story in here somewhere. Um, let's see. Well, it could always be more than one, couldn't it? It should be a horrible love triangle, is what it should really be. Um, and our master villain masterminded it, right? Isn't that what it would have been? Oh, um, and. It looked like it ended up in two of them killing each other and the third killing themselves. And, and they should be they should be I think they should be public figures, not necessarily politicians, but like um, people loved by the public. So one mm -hmm. of them might have been maybe a, a popular noble person, but then there could have been like a you know whatever the equivalent of a rock star would be. A, a poet or a musician, yeah, sure. Um, and what was what was your role in this? Um, was one of these a family member, a friend, or were you one of the three? What? what oh, I wasn't. I wasn't. Sean wasn't one of the three. Sean was playing matchmaker. It's probably what it would have been because he was incurable. So it was probably him helping. The shy one, you know, playing like uh, Roxanne, maybe. Maybe I was giving the shy one uh, words to compete with the poet or the musician. And and so we have this mastermind, this master of disguise, who used you as a tool yeah. wow. to set up this triangle. That is pretty horrible. Uh, I like that. I can I can certainly live with that. Uh, that seems that seems reasonable to me. Um, and what's, what's, what's at stake for you there, uh, Zev, uh, regarding this mastermind? What's your connection to this, that pursuing, why are you following them? So he, or they, hold up, my, uh, my family's just got back. Hold up a sec. Oh, sure. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, I, I, my goal is to obtain lost secrets, and and I'm looking for this ancient text. Is what it says. Okay. And so yeah, I'm looking for this person who who knows where the ancient texts are. Okay. And and what's this this ma this uh, master of disguise? What's what's their relationship? Are they the one that stole it and handed it off, or what do you yeah, imagine? Yeah, they're the one who stole it and handed it off. Okay. Uh, is this like an old uh, classic medical text, or is it a magical text? What do you think? I think it's magical. Yeah. Okay. It's some there's some sort of magic attached to it. Magical text. 
like something that's sealed that shouldn't be open. Yeah. That's always a classic there. Like it's just a little bit of stakes and danger. All right. All of you have worked together. You've all crossed paths at, on the trail of this, this villain. Uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, figure out a name for them uh, when we take our break. Um, but we're going to start with that uh, assumption that you have worked together. Um, so you've heard each other's stories. So, uh, Victor, uh, among the other three, uh, who's the one that, uh, if, if, if people are going to go in teams, who's the person that you're like, I need to go with them. That's the person I need to have with me. Hmm. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I mean, you might not say it, but but if when when the split goes, who will be who you'll be relieved if you get paired with? I think. Or process of elimination. Who are you pleased to avoid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of. Um, I think Rashawn's probably the one that I would stick with if, 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 if I, uh, forced split were to happen, it would, that would probably be the direction. Uh, you share interests. Uh, he, you're an explorer. Mm -hmm. He explores places and steals things. Uh, so oh, there's he, certain yeah. overlap there. Yeah, okay. we, can get, we can get into all sorts of places. It's great. Do you think that that you know that Rashan is kind of a thief? Um, uh, I, from being a pirate at one point, yes. Okay, Rashan is definitely a thief. I would never right. say that. <laughs> these, are, these are important things. Term things mean things. I Don't. would. I would probably. It would bother me, but I would probably not even confront him if I felt, well, I, I do feel it's wrong. I do feel it's an issue. And, but and I, I, I think with it's confronting him. Yeah, and I think it's really important. Uh, uh, one of the things about this society is social power is really important. Uh, there's kind of a, a, the authority is a little bit looser than, say, in Thea, but reputation and politeness and being well seen uh, is very important and social pressure means that your neighbors you know look down on you ostracize you and and that that can be bad so people are very careful about what they say uh, duels are fought over over words uh, uh, you know uh, uh, if you say that somebody is something that perhaps is not the nicest way to put it uh, so we are we are cautious in those words. She says this, but she still took the golden rose I gave her that was stolen. <laughs> it was hot. I have good uh, taste. <laughs> uh, Malco, um, when you first cross paths with uh, uh, Zev, uh, that first encounter didn't go well between the two of you, like, like you maybe almost kind of came, uh, came to blows, um, or, or there was some mistake. What, what happened there? I'm thinking Zev doesn't frequently go in for, uh, just like pure competition, like go down to the pits and, you know, get paid for defeating people. But I'm sure that every once in a while, these things happen. Um, probably the first time I ever met them, him, Maria, I'm sorry. Uh, or I, I, him. him, okay. Uh, I met him. There was probably an opponent that he had. Somebody that, you know, he had trounced relatively fairly, but it was still just a boxing match. It wasn't certainly to the death, and that person was someone who needed to die. Um, 
I had not intended for anybody to see it, but Zev walked out at an inopportune moment, uh, interfered, and I had to come at it a different way. I think ultimately what ended up kind of sanding things over was it turned out that that person was uh, corrupt in some way. Maybe there was some uh, gambling or other uh, corruption involved in you know, the, the matches, maybe the person actually like threw the match and Zev didn't realize that he had been taken for a patsy in somebody else's betting schemes. And so, uh, you know, in this person needing to be eliminated, uh, I finally had to like kind of lay my cards out on the table to get him to stop interfering with me doing my uh, job. Uh, Zev, are you cool with that, or would you have needed it to the the, the criminal to be a, a more severe than that? I think it has to be a bit more severe than that. Okay, uh, like what? Uh, give us give us a, an example. Let's let's like define that. Some conspiracy, or something else. Like maybe he was involved in the slave trade or something. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. So. Perhaps uh, the person for whom he was working, um, you know, the, like I don't want to make it seem gladiatorial. It's not like, you know, pitting slaves against each other per, per se. But uh, I think that there were people that you were having to defeat and take down that you didn't realize were just like kidnapped off the street. You thought it was all sort of like on the up and up. You thought these were people who were here to, you know, go through the competition in good faith. And it turned out a lot of these were, you know, street people who had been, you know, taken either against their will or, you know, as slaves to pay off debtors, you know, like take or, me so that you don't knee break my wife or whatever. You know, fighters grabbed up, their families threatened mm -hmm. if they don't fight, uh, if they don't do as it uh, said. Right, so uh, I think there was sense. a lot, like a big, I mean, you know, kind of take your traditional Western corruption in boxing and kind of translate that. Okay. Uh, you know, I like, like that. Like maybe a little bit of like organized crime sort of you know, involvement in that and, maybe, and your character wasn't aware of the extent to which they were you know, being manipulated by the powers that be. I'm almost okay. thinking like, uh, you know, the Daredevil story, Matt Murdock's dad. Does that uh, work for you, Maria? Okay. Um, uh, let me come to you, Roshan. Um, uh, of the three that you're with, um, who are you most wary of? Hmm, let's see. It's not Musina because I understand pirates. Mm -hmm. Um It would be hilarious. Zeph is intimidating. <laughs> Zeph is impressive for his fighting ability, but I think it's going to be um I think it's Malco. And why? Why is that? Magic is such an unknown. It can be so varied and unpredictable and hard to anticipate what Malcolm might do. And how do I know that the last bead is not for me? That That is a, a very, very uh, good point. Um, Remember, you should just endeavor not to earn it. That's all. <laughs> what happens if I steal that necklace from you? Uh, Zev, uh, before you had ever met and kind of crossed paths and kind of shared stories and found out that you were all chasing the same villain, uh, you know, before that, sometime before that, you had uh, crossed paths with one of the other three. 
uh, from a distance and, and seen them do something or heard something about that, or heard something about them. You didn't actually interact with them, but you, you saw them do something or heard about them. Who was that and what did you hear? I think just to round it up, it's um, Musina. And I think, uh, so it's more, um, I, I think I saw her talking to one of the roommates that she found and it, and it's talking about the old, good old times or whatever, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, like. Uh, so you had seen her, you knew she was a pirate. And when you, when you met her later, you had that in the back of your mind. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, that makes, makes sense to me. So I got one last question before, before we go to break. Uh, you guys are in the city of Smyrna. This is just south of uh, Iskander. Iskander is the, the big capital, great city of Anatol Eich. Smyrna is a, a, another port city uh, to the south of it, um, a city of uh, boat building, ship, ship construction. Um, and you four are in a garden, or in a garden of this household of this estate you're in this garden after dark you are not supposed to be there tell me Roshan what is the thing that gives away that they've released the cheetahs onto the grounds The pet monkeys have climbed the trees. All right. And, and that's where we will that's where we will take up uh, when we come back from break. All right. So let's take five.
So now I give you an opportunity to make monkey noises. <laughs> Rich, Rich is very good at that kind of thing. I'm less good at the animal sounds. So the name of your villain is Ibn Majhul, which not exactly, but close sort of means the faceless. So uh, Ibn Majhul, um, that, that is the, the villain. You know that he works for a mastermind, but he's certainly the one that you want to get a hold of and eventually walk your way up the, the, the chain there to, to find out who is pulling the strings at the top. Uh, you are in the gardens of uh, someone who you know has documents pointing to who Ibn Majhul's operatives are in Iskander. You want to get a hold of those so when you travel to the great capital city, you can track those people down. It will probably lead into all of your stories. So you've made your way onto the grounds of this uh, uh, estate here. Uh, and uh, this uh, estate is owned uh, by uh, a person only known as uh, Master Zian. Uh, Master Zian is a merchant of questionable resources, uh, likely a smuggler, uh, perhaps has pirates, uh, uh, not so nice pirates in his pay. Um, there are pirates that serve the empire, and then there are other pirates who raid the areas. Master Zion. Uh, so you're in this garden. Um, you come over the wall. The uh, estate, you know, the nose, there are guards, there are some lanterns. But now you know, with the sound of these screeching <laughs> monkeys up these trees, that uh, uh, something, some animal, you knew that they had cheetahs, as guard animals, uh, has been released out here into the grounds. So let me ask you then, and I'm going to ask you, Krista, since I put that question to you at the last, I'm going to start with you on this since I made you answer that. When that happens, when you hear that screeching, that they go up into the trees, what do you do? Um, so therefore I know there are trees. Yes. Um, <laughs> and feel free to paint the scene, whatever you think is, is fair. We're kind of collaborating to get this sort of initial uh, encounter out. Okay. So I'm assuming this is, so Anatolia is probably analog Turkey. Yeah, that's probably a good, good, um, we're, we're here in an area that's, that's greener. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these trees could be. They could be deciduous. They could be tall, sort of piney things. Uh -huh. um, so I'll go with the tall, piney ones with strong branches. And looking up the monkeys, I realized that, oh, this tree has a branch that reaches out towards the balcony, getting pretty close. So okay. that's the one that I'm going to go for. Okay. So, so Roshan is going to warn the others, say, the cheetahs are coming, and make a dash for the tree. Okay. Uh, when you hear that, Zev, what do you do? Uh, Zev is, let's see, fitness is not that well. Athletic, it's good though. So I would, climbing up the tree use fitness or brawn? Uh, I do, tell me. All right, I think uh, he's gonna pretty much, I'm not sure if he can parkour, but let's say he can. He can okay. parkour up the tree and and then jump onto the balcony. All right, Basically all right. What, following Roshan. Um, what about you, uh, Musina? Also to the trees or some other approach? Um, 
I think I want to make sure the last of us is off the ground before I go. So I can uh, assist. Uh, I think because I'm I'm kind of looking at uh, what was it? Uh, second story work. Uh huh. See, I'm I'm. It's either that or step where I step. Um, I'm able to kind of give somebody a hand if it looks like they need a hand. Um, whether I, I will definitely make it look like they didn't need a hand. It's one of those. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you wanted to, you could spend that hero point and you could get yourself and one per other person. We wouldn't even have you roll. Well, there would be um, no risk. You'd get up, you'd get up quietly. Sure. We'll do uh, that. Uh, who do you want to take up with you when you go up? I think uh, who, who looks who looks what, what, from the others that are still on the ground. Uh, who, who do you think? Uh, uh, you are all pretty good at this. Malco is probably the least good of all of you all being excellent. Okay. That seems okay. like a fair assessment, Malco. Um, he's actually relatively uh, fit. He's not big and brawny, but he's relatively athletic, actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, 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 well, in a party I mean, of, of awesome people, right. you are you are one one degree less awesome, but still awesome. So, I mean, if it looks like there's not an issue with it, then I don't really have a concern to, okay. to spend a point on that. Sure. Um, uh, and I mean, uh, Malco, are you also going up the tree or are you doing something else? Actually, I, I look at him and I'll say, just in case we need to secure our way out, just do me a favor. Be ready to reach out a hand in case I need it. And, uh, you know, I kind of give you the head back up, and then I just kind of step back really calmly, put my hands sort of like in front of me, and uh, wait for those two cheetahs. Um, I'm going to ask you, Lowell, if this actually seems reasonable. Though. Sure. Uh, he has uh, one of his magics is to, it says to give another person a sense of calm simply by touching them. And what I was thinking is if I can prevent these creatures from not being agitated if we need to leave and they're just docile kitties i would like to prepare that now okay um so you you're trying to calm the the creatures right but that creatures. kind of means i've got to wait for them to come up to me so i can reach out and touch them okay so you're, um, you're doing a wait to the last second kind of thing yes okay so uh, for those of you who are climbing up uh i'm going to walk and 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 see what what skills you're going to use uh, it's going to be one raise to get up, uh, one raise to not be seen by uh, uh, anybody, and one raise not to make like a lot of noise. Does that seem like a fair set of of things you need to do and risks? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So uh, let's let's walk through for the people who are going up the tree, and then we'll come uh, to uh, Malco. Uh, so, Christo, what skills are you using? And trait and skill. You're muted. Dun, 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 dun. It's because I'm too quiet. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so, I want to say that this is going to be finesse, actually. Um, Perfect. So, so that is, and he's not, he's not doing it really showy, except for maybe the description. Um, so I'm going to say, actually, he. It's just a very straight run up, the trunk of the tree to the branch. Basically, it makes it look so effortless. Um, so that's going to be finesse and athletics. Okay. Um, and uh, you described your, your obs observations. Uh, so I will give you an extra die for that. And then it's the first time you've used athletics in this scene. So you get an extra die. So look at that. Uh, so you can oh, go yeah. ahead and roll all that and take your successes. Uh, oh, there's my roller. Okay. So. Uh, Maria, 
Uh, yes. Tell me about what trait you want to use. All right, I am going to be a bit more rough and tough, so I'll use brawn. God, pulling yourself up, okay. And uh, what's what skill is appropriate? I think um, I want to use I want to use athletics. Okay, that one. sounds good. Um, and just and anything you want to tell me about having uh, rough and tumble, so you're kind of pulling yourself up more by by sheer dint of strength. Um. Yeah. He he basically. I I don't have anything to add, so I I'll miss out on the bonus side because okay. I don't uh, even so you know what to say. Die. One die for the first time you've used uh, athletics in this scene, so uh, that's gonna be eight dice for you. Uh, then uh, what about uh, you, uh, Musina? Tell me about what your trait and skill combination is gonna be. Okay, I think she's using uh, finesse and and athletics, and getting about halfway up, kind of doing that swing around the thing from one crooked branch to the other, and then waiting right in the, the crook of one of them, uh, high enough that it's just a few more steps to the balcony, and low enough that I can reach down reach down if I have to. Okay, that sounds, sounds great to me. Um, by the way, it looks to me like we actually lost some of your numbers on your traits. Uh, you should have two more points. Uh, I don't know what happened there. On which ones? On your traits for... Uh, Mufsina. Okay. Uh, you should have uh, a total of nine uh, plus four is, you should have 13 points worth of uh, trait dots. That looks like you've just got 11, so you've got two, two more you need to put. Well, definitely finesse. Okay. Uh, and probably resolve. Okay. Uh, so you described that as finesse. So it sounds like finesse and is athletics the, the right skill for you? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and you've described your process. So I'll give you a die for that. And it's the first time you're using it in the scene. So you get an extra die for that. So look at all those eight dice you're going to roll. Cool. Again, uh, one to succeed, two more raises to get up. You guys can go ahead and roll that. Um, I, rolled, I got three raises. Got three raises. Did you have any extra dice? I have two extra dice. Do you want to sell them to me? Uh, so uh, do hero dice recover at the end of at the beginning of each session, or or not? They do recover at the beginning of each session. Yeah. And then I won't sell them to you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wank, wank, wank. That was the better call, by the way. Smart. Uh, uh, and uh, Malco, uh, tell me what what you're you're doing. Um, how, uh, do you want to go up the tree? Do we want to uh, do uh, uh, you calming these animals? Um, I plan on following them, but first I want to try and make these uh, cheetah something that we need to worry about a little less. I know that we've already avoided them, but we have to leave okay. at some point. Um, so, I think so that since we knew about them ahead of time, it kind of implies that we did a little bit of study. And so I took a little bit of time, looked into Cheetah, what their favorite prey were, that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, so I'm standing with my back to the tree. And when I start seeing those shapes move in the darkness with sort of not like a big flourish, because I'm not trying to get them to leap at me, but just sort of like a gentle swing. Like, I'm not nervous. I'm not scared. Expanding the cloak makes me big and imposing to them but I produce these two, um, you know, probably the equivalent of pheasants, something like that, that are perfumed with, uh, you know, the, just the scent of blood, something that's going to make them come and be like, this smells tastier than the guy who's standing behind it. Um, and just sort of like kneel down and lay them in front of me and just wait for them to step up. And as they do, I just kind of reach out both palms and kind of give them a stroke on the head, or at least that's a plan. Uh, sure, I'm also sure. Gonna, uh, so we're going to say three successes. Uh, one, to do it without raising an alarm, like the, the pheasants fly off and bat, bat through a window. Um, and one success each for calming each of these animals. So that's just three successes. Um, so what trait do you think is appropriate for this? Um, I think 
because I need to keep my nerve, I'm probably using resolve because I can okay resolve and what skill? But then I think scholarship since I looked into what I needed to do. Ahead Perfect. Of uh, and again, extra die because the first time you use scholarship in this scene, and you get an extra die because you gave us that big description. So I get all those dice. You get to roll those and check and see. Christo, I heard how many successes Maria has. I heard how many Zev has. Zev gets up there. Uh, how many successes did you get? Four. Four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hang on to that extra success because I'm going to ask you what you want to do with it in a second, okay? I also have an extra die I'm willing to sell you. I would gladly take that die. There you go. You get a hero point. I'm going to write down one darkness. Um, I can't remember what they call it. I'm just call it darkness. <laughs> I think that's what it is in Coriolis. Uh, and uh, what about uh, you, Mushina? What, how many successes did you get? I have four successes. Yes. And to die. Do you want to sell me that die? <laughs> uh, for the hero point? Yeah. yeah we'll do look that. At that. Yeah, we'll absolutely. That yeah, no, you're losing money not doing it. So, uh, sure. All right. I just put my two darkness in the chat there. Um, so, yeah, you get a hero point uh, for selling me that extra die. Uh, and then, Malco, let's check how many successes did you get? You're uh, muted. I believe it's five. Let me... Five? I got five. I'm okay. I'm super lucky. If there's like three tens here. Nice. Um, nice. Now, I guess here's the thing. So if I needed one for each of them and then one to not be noticed. Yeah. You could spend the extra successes. I, I would let you spend those extra two to, to actually just get up there with the rest of the group. Okay. No then, questions asked. Would I be able to spend them to... Uh, the, the cats are already calmed, but to perhaps ingratiate myself? Um, like, if they're obviously trained cheetahs, right? Like, things right. so... Just, like, in taking a few seconds with them trying to, like, figure out, okay, chances are they've been using, like, the standard sort of, like, training phrases, see which ones they respond to, and be like, okay, they responded to this, they responded to this. So I know that I can use this when we're all sure. going out. Sure. Uh, I will say that extra success if you encounter the cheetahs again, go to con uh, to deal with them, that uh, I will give you a uh, bonus dice, okay? Okay. Sounds, Sounds good. good. All right. Um, so you guys can get up. Uh, the, this this beautiful uh, stone and marble palace. Uh, uh, the cheetahs have been calmed. Uh, uh, all of you get up uh, onto uh, uh, probably, let's say, the, the third floor of this, and you've done it super quiet. Um, uh, you've got a couple of extra successes. Um, Krista, what's another good thing that happens when you get up here onto this? You've got an extra success. What do you want to use that for? Well, I guess the question is, this is the end of the scene. So, because otherwise, right, we might have to save them in case there's something, uh, some other hidden uh, opponent or something like that we have to deal with. Well, this is still still the, the, the same scene. You guys are still on the, the break-in scene. Okay. Um, how about the room to the balcony is empty and the door is unlocked? Perfect. It's high enough. You get up there. They've got a room that's that's empty and unlocked. And I believe that uh, um, uh, Mosina, you also had an extra success. Um, what what else is good? Um, so we're coming in to do. There are some papers some... that this uh, Master Zion has that will lead you to the agents. Oh, um, the the room the room's definitely got to be his his office. Okay, where he would have such stuff. All right, so it's empty. The door is unlocked. You guys have gotten in up, climbed up to this second floor. They're in this room. Uh, uh, there are definitely guards moving around this place, and you're uncertain how long it'll be before Zion. Uh, returns back to here how much time you have um and uh kind of look around i would say that you can see scrolls and paperwork and things like that but there is a a great locked safe there 
um, what do you want to do? You're asking all of us, or I'm asking all of you right now. We'll start with you, Christo. <laughs> yeah, I was like, because <laughs> you spoke up. Yeah, Rashawn cracks his knuckles and says, "We think it's in the safe, right?" I will check the papers to make sure that the papers don't have the information. And while Roshan works his stuff. Yeah, you're familiar with this. It, it looks like general, uh, you know, business ledgers. Some of it is that classic where where they've got two versions of the same document, that kind of thing. It's it's very basic sort of criminal stuff here, but it doesn't look like that, the papers that you're looking for. Okay. Um. Well, I guess I'm going to, can I spend my hero point and use my, uh, where is it? Got it. Spend a hero point to immediately pick a lock, crack a safe, or disarm a trap. Absolutely. I can do that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I make it look so easy, don't I? Uh, and you will pop it open. And uh, there is a, a box that clearly has some papers uh, in it. Um, uh, but you also see, uh, that there is a glass sphere that is carefully resting on top of the box. It's translucent. You can, you can see through it. It looks like there's water in it. And you can see that there's a, a, a band of etching around the outside of the sphere. Um, what are the what are the two of you, uh, um, uh, Malco uh, and uh, uh, Musira? Uh, well, well, we've got uh, Zev going through the papers, and we've got uh, Roshan uh, popping the the lock. What are you two up to? Gotta be watching the door. So okay. I'm I'm heading into an inner hall okay. and kind of cracking it to see what I can see. Uh, that kind um, of thing. Well, here. Are, some discussions downstairs. I mean, it does sound like people are coming. I mean, it actually maybe even sounds like Master Zion is uh, has a guest with him, and uh, maybe some bodyguards. And they can hear them. They're coming up from the first floor. Can hear Master Zion. He's got kind of this droning voice. He kind of goes on when he talks, sort of like this when he is talking. It is going. The condition wow. is walking. Yes. So uh -huh. as as he's saying that, I'm going to kind of whisper over, you, you better hurry this up. Uh, and what about you, Malco? What are you doing? Um, because I took a little bit of extra time with the cheetahs. I'm probably only just getting over the balcony as they're starting to uh, do this. So I take a quick appraisal on the, the scene and just say, well, did we find what we need? And kind of say that in a real low carrying tone. Um, by the way, can you lower your... Uh, microphone. So <laughs> okay. Sorry, I was wondering what that was. <laughs> Thank you, Marie. You spotted that. I, and, and, I, and I think Roshan will turn and, and and see Malco come in and, and gesture for Malco to come over and look at the sphere. Okay. Um, I, I will. When I'm done with the papers, I will guard the entrance as well. Okay. Uh, so uh, right now we've got at sort of the door. We've got uh, Mosina uh, and Zev kind of waiting. You can hear them coming. Uh, if this were a, a movie, we'd be cross-cut between you two <laughs> waiting there and the figures coming up the stairs. And, of course, them stopping every once in a while to admire it, a tapestry or, or whatnot. And then we cut back to uh, uh, Zev and Roshan. Um, Is it Zev or Malco? Malco. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Malco. Sorry, Malco oh. and uh, Roshan. I'm going to get these names wrong repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's because we're so good at disguises. Yeah. Yeah, I'll uh I'll kneel down uh so I can kind of peer at this thing and uh you know palm out like a a little candle that I you know illuminate just like a little tea light size thing so I can see the orb a little bit closer and try and figure out what exactly it is. Is it just something that he's saving, or is it like a booby trap of some sort? It doesn't seem if it's arcane, or is it just, you know, scientific, like a globe of acid that will fall down, destroy the papers, or whatever. Perfect. 
So I'm going to need you to make a roll. Okay. Uh, it it's going to be one success to learn generally what it is. Two successes to learn exactly what it is, and a third success to not activate it. Uh, okay. So I'm thinking it's probably wits plus notice as I'm figuring this out. That seems perfect. It is the first time you have noticed in the scene, so you get an extra die for that. I love the description of the candle. Okay. Leaning forward, I'll give you another die for that. So you've got eight dice. There's almost no chance that you could fail. <laughs> Just watch me. And... Ooh, I have three raises and two Perfect. extra dice. Now, you could certainly sell me those dice if you wanted extra hero points or you could just say no <laughs> how many danger points do you spend for different things let me oh i give bonuses to my bad guys and i use them to activate moves oh but you know what if we get the thing and get out of here the bad guys will never have a chance to spend them on us take my That's dice you won't need but the bad guys are already here <laughs> <laughs> what do you oh. think you can't be a hero unless there's some danger to face. Okay. So, so you're selling me those... those yes. uh, Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Can you just sell one, or do you have to sell them all? You could just sell one if you wanted. Okay. Just make it sure. Uh, so, this is a sphere uh, holding uh, a very particular kind of... Uh, Gin of the sea. Um, essentially, uh, it is held there uh, by this this sphere. It's very delicate. You want to be very careful. You don't want to touch it with your bare hand. Um, uh, but this sphere actually uh, will probably create a great deal of water when it is broken. Um, like a torrent of water. Um, uh, so you want to be very careful with that. Um, uh, you don't want to touch it, and you want to be very gentle with it. Okay. Uh, um, does that seem like fair info? I think so. I guess I have one other question about one of my spells then. Absolutely. When it says uh, point at a target at range, and this uh, sends a fine concentrated beam of light to destroy it, does destroy it mean break it, or does it mean it like it's gone? That means break it. Okay, just checking. It's not disintegrate, <laughs> but it was a nice try. I like that. <laughs> uh, then I'll. You're taking some time to to, to look at this, um, uh, um, uh, Roshan. Uh, this thing is sitting on top of this box. The box is what you want. Just pointing it out to you. Um, uh, I'm going to come to uh, uh, Zev and uh, Muthira. Um, you guys are kind of watching. You're hearing those people come up the stairs, but they're still a away, away, ways away. Um, but then, coming down the hall, like closer, like turn a corner, uh, you'll see a group of guardsmen coming uh, this way. Um, and they look agitated. So, quick question. Yeah. Does my stare down, it says to intimidate the character. Can it, I use it to intimidate a, the group of guards? Or does That's... it have to be a singular character? Uh, for that, it would be a, a singular uh, character, but you could use that. I would give you a bonus die if you wanted to use intimidation to like essentially do damage and reduce the strength of a brute squad. Yeah, you, you could use it that way. It wouldn't automatically push them back, but you could use it to supplement that. That would be cool. All right. Uh, how about Musina? Which one do you want to take? Uh, it's a pair of them coming down the... Uh, the it's, a, it's a squad. It's a, it's a squad. <laughs> Uh, do we want to take them, or do we want to hurry our uh, our? Uh, we don't have time. Do we have time? I don't think we have time because uh, we have to push the them. Only... I I say we push them, and get us okay. back out the out the out at least onto the patio so they can't see us in the room here. 
So question, is there uh, sure. uh, windows in the office? Yeah, you guys came in through the windows. Yeah. Oh, but like, is are there windows that go elsewhere or? Uh, because I, I because there's so a I, door, I, right? I imagine you're on an outer wall and you guys yeah. opened the windows, the shutters to, you know, those kind of wooden with the, the yeah. cut throughs to, to come in to here. Uh, so, oh, okay. so the windows go out outside from here. Okay, that makes sense. Um, okay. All right. In the meantime, I will still stand guard while Mosina tells them to hurry the fuck up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so in that case, it comes to Rashawn here while you two guys, are, you, guys you, you guys wait there. Rashawn, what do you want to do? And, and, and I'm kind of leaning over your shoulder, my hand on your back, kind of like, uh, you know, we can't sit here too long. I'm like totally picturing that Indiana Jones scene where he's you trying to get the idol and he's waiting, putting the sand in the, the uh, <laughs> bag, but that won't work. Um, so I'll turn to uh, Malcolm and say, can I pick it up with a gloved hand? And he nods. Um, Gently. So I'll, I'll use, I'll pick it up with a gloved hand. Um, okay very carefully and carry it over. Are we all in the room now with the door shut or not? The door is shut. People are coming. You're all in the room. We're all in the room. Yeah. So the door is shut though or not? Yes. <laughs> um, then I'll place it next to the door and we can, and then gesture for everybody. Let's go, go, go. Let's get out and take the box. Okay. And have somebody else take the box because I'm occupied with that. So, so you're leaving it sit on the floor right next to the door, so that when they open it, it gets knocked yeah. somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, uh, if he goes out the, if he if he sets that, tells you to grab the the box, Musina, and go. Do you grab the box and go? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I grab it and just because we don't have time, I can't. I can't. Uh, I can't risk their uh, the the group's involvement here. Okay. Uh, uh, now, uh, is your intent? Let me ask you this: Is your intent to get out the window, go down, and just kind of kind of get moving? You're not really worried about stealth at that point. Just getting out of here. Um. Yes. Now. Okay. Uh, if if he set the the glass ball there, I mean, we can't just hide outside the window and expect to. Uh, Perfect. So not out. have anybody notice. Oh, nope. nope. you're going. Uh, what about you, Zev? Uh, uh, Musin is going. Malco's going. I think I'm going, but uh, so my priorities are get out quickly, and then if I have any more races, I'll I'll use my I'll use that to be stealthy. If okay. that makes sense. Uh, I I will say that uh, this is. This is a trap that you are setting, and that's really the crux of this moment here. Um, and that is going to, uh, I would say, uh, uh, Zev, uh, Musina, you can get that stuff, and you can get out no problem. Uh, the question is going to be all on Roshan and setting this trap here. Um, so what do you think is the appropriate trait and skill for doing this? Um, ooh, you know what? Unfortunately, I think this is finesse. <laughs> so, ah, but traits don't matter. Uh, oh, it's the skill that matters for, for the extra die? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. So I think it's finesse and I'm looking through them all. What fits best? Theft, I guess. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, perfect. Um, for setting traps? Oh, yeah. Perfect. I mean, yeah, I guess that's it. Okay. So great. So that gives me three, three. And wow. one for the first time. Mm -hmm. And one for explaining how you do it. And tell me what it looks like. Um, so this is, you know, using the gloved hand to put, to put it very carefully next to the door and release and get back very slowly backing away um, faster and faster. And then turning and running and getting to the balcony, but having to turn and look back because I have to see how this happens. Okay. One success not to not to break this as you're doing it. One success okay. to get it into place. 
one success to not get caught in the the what is about to happen and one success to get to the ground without hurting yourself when so, all this breaks out so i need four successes you need four successes but you can choose which ones you do or don't do right oh oh that's not very good um but i get to reroll one die right yes. when i've got when i've got a skill level of 3 isn't that what it is that is correct so you can hit okay, that reroll it ro oh damn i rerolled it all <laughs> um so I won't do the reroll one of my die because two of them came up better. Okay. Um, not a lot though. They only came up twos. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so calculation. What do you got? I got three raises. So what is the thing that doesn't happen? Okay. So you said one is to set the trap correctly. Uh, one is to pick this up and not have it break. Got that. One is to set the trap correctly. Got that. Okay. And then the third, so you have a choice of getting caught in this thing when it blows, uh, uh, when it blows or uh, 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 which is, you could certainly do that. The other one is, is kind of landing uh, softly outside rather than landing a little hard. But so I could get caught in this thing and land softly? Yeah. Okay, then I'll you do that. Take, would, <laughs> yeah. So uh, these three have hit the grounds. Um, Malco's uh, uh, cheetahs are still there, kind of uh, gnawing on those uh, uh, delicious pheasants that uh, Malco brought. Kind of, kind of doing that. And they're they're purring. Um, and you, you three hit the ground, and you're standing there, kind of at that window. And the door opens, hits. Uh, you're not sure if it's the guards or someone else, but when as soon as that hits, it's just like the lightest thing. Like they just kind of, oh, let's see what's in the room. Let's just do a check. And they just slightly open it. And this thing cracks. And you will see this sudden, this just figure made of water just blow out from this, just rise up. And then this river comes out. And the room just floods with water. And uh, you're going to get hit by that wave for six wounds. Ooh. Um, but it does carry you safely to the ground <laughs> as you are washed out. Um, from your perspective, the three of you, you kind of have gotten like halfway across the the court, the sort of garden, and then suddenly every window in that building, every, every, every space, every door frame, everything, water comes spilling out white foamed water just everywhere comes washing down and you will see people you know uh uh clothing uh uh you know uh, everything just they come flying out through this as there's this torrent of of water there um uh uh you have a choice you can can stay and uh uh uh, uh try and pick up some pieces um or you can run and get away with this info no problem Pick up pieces of what? Oh, well, we've got all these people unconscious or things like that. You could go in and uh, try. And... I'm going to activate one of my quirks. Okay. I uh, earn a hero point when you curse, persuade, threaten, or cajole, or otherwise force a character to allow you to give her medical attention. Okay. And I'm going to do that to Crystal's character. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, I mentioned, Rashawn, uh, you're kind of laying on the ground there. Where, where did you land? Describe to me that. Um, actually, I was sort of thinking I landed in the treetops. Okay. Like, <laughs> sort of like I got thrown out, and that's why it was it hurt. But also, you know, and maybe I like bounced down to a lower branch or something like that. Um, okay. So, so you're climbing down, uh, uh, like okay, we need to get away, but but Zev kind of grabs you. And yeah. he's doing that, like, that. No, 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 no. Uh, what are, how did you, what happened? Uh, where, where are you hurt? Uh, uh, what? Rashawn? Um, so I, I, th I think Rashawn is going to be <coughs> coughing out water. <laughs> All right, cough it out, cough it out. All right, there we go. Uh, <laughs> salty. <laughs> uh, uh, Malco and uh, Musir, this is like nothing you've ever seen. Um, what do you do? 
So go ahead and give you a point. Despite my better judgment, uh, we came in to steal some documents, and suddenly people are being blasted to within an inch of their lives by water. I need to make sure that these people who are, like, laying strewn about are actually okay. We can't just leave them drowning, but, you know, when all – we could have just taken the papers and got out. So I, uh, like, I'm halfway across, and suddenly I see that, and I kind of curse under my breath and turn. Okay. And I, you know – I look at, uh, I'll get the names in a second, Um, Musina, and say, take the papers, we'll meet you outside. And uh, I, you know, well, well, I guess Rashawn's probably got it, so that might be pointless to say. (laughs) But, but, uh, you know. Uh, I think think I'm going to respond, no, we got to get out of here. You're coming with us now. Uh, The water is just going to soak into the soil. I, it's just the water, people, and I and I and I shout out at her. The people need medical attention. I say, mm-hmm. it's only water when sailors drown. We still need to make sure they're okay. If nothing else, just prop them up. It'll take but a moment, and I will, you know, quickly, uh, you know, rush over to where they are. All right. So, I think there is a benefit and a cost to you all of your mercies. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, let me ask you, uh, Musira, uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to stay to watch? Do you want to get away with the papers? Do you want to help uh, out? I think, I think I probably like, um, turn to, to make it to the, the way out, kind of out over the wall or whatever it is to, to get off the property. I I'd probably take a step, maybe two steps. And then I like, tuck the stuff that I have in a sash or whatever kind of at my waist and I turn around and help. Guys, we'll turn. Uh, There is that moment. Uh, You will all get a hero point for being heroes. All right. Uh, uh, As well. Do we those hero points next session? You you can keep those hero points. If you're above your your starting, you can keep a hold of those. You guys will all get a, a hero point for that. Um, and and yeah, there are servants. You go and grab the servants up and and make sure that they're okay. And like like the 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 animals and things like that. Uh, uh, the, you know, the cats have climbed into the trees. Uh, the monkeys are up in the trees. Um, uh, you'll get them to safety. But uh, there will come a point uh, uh, after this uh, initial sort of blast and stuff. As you're you know making sure the last of these servants, these poor innocents are safe and protected and, and none of them have drowned. You know, they've taken bruises and stuff, but the water came, knocked them and then, uh, you know, washed them out and keep coming. So they're fine. But that is the point at which, uh, the guards have gathered their wits about them. And, uh, uh, you are facing, uh, uh, just as you're finishing up with these servants, uh, two groups of guards that come rushing over uh, to where you are. You are are most definitely not supposed to be on the grounds. You are strangers. This thing has happened, um, and you? they are going to 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 rush to uh, 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 engage you. Uh, do I get an extra hero point for activating the quirk, or did it not activate? Uh, isn't that one? I said. I said yes. Take a hero point for that. Oh, you said. I thought you said everyone take a hero point. No, uh, you, you took a hero point earlier. Uh, did that uh, answer uh, to your when you add the question? So yeah, you got a hero point for your quirk, and then I gave yeah. everybody an extra hero point. Okay, cool. So I have okay. three. Yeah. So uh, you're gonna have to figure out how you want to deal with these brute squads. There are two brute squads. Uh, essentially, uh, they are both strength seven, which means you need to deal uh, seven raises to them each to, to reduce them. Um, they get to roll and deal some wounds to people when, uh, uh, when they go, uh, you can take all kinds of tactics. So tell me, uh, Rashawn, how would you deal with, with these, these guards? They're guards for an awful person. They, they're, you know, they don't even care that you're helping these servants. I was going to say, how do, did they actually see me as they, as I, as I got washed out or not? No, they, they just say that you are, are strangers uh-huh. and they are are 
uh, going to take care of outside outsiders. Oh, so I think Rashawn is going to turn to them and say, "What took you so long? We saw what happened from the street and came rushing in to help. This is horrible. I, we need to help all these people." So you're going to try and and uh, peel off some of them uh, with uh, some uh, 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 talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going okay. to try. I'm I, I'm trying to con them into thinking that we came in after this happened. Okay. So what's the trait and skill that you're using? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, <laughs> um, I'm thinking it's wits and oh, convince. <laughs> I, 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 I want to do it with. I want to do the same thing. Well, let, let me let me finish with Christo, and then I'll come to you. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, so Christo, uh, trying empathy. Oh yeah, empathy would be better actually. I guess that is what I'm trying to appeal to is their emotion. Okay. It's convincing also, but if it's empathy is, is how you sway them emotionally, then yeah, that's it. So that's going to be six dice for you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. okay. Sure. Total with the bonuses. It, it, do I get a, a hero point for uh, investigating something unusual, especially if it looks dangerous? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Okay. I needed that. Okay. Uh, uh, at, so let me come to you then, Maria. What, how are you going to uh, approach this? All right. So I will say, I will basically support uh, Roshan and what she's saying. Uh, greetings. I am a doctor. I, w I, w I came here as soon as I could. And, I, and please help me carry these people to safety. Okay. So I think and you're I doing uh, the, the same thing. Are you also using wits and empathy? Yeah, but my empathy is three, so... Oh, that's nice. <laughs> uh, so that's great. Uh, so you're going to be rolling eight dice. Yes. Um, Wait, eight or seven? Uh, well, let's see. So we got three and three. You describe yes. to me what you're doing, and okay. it's the first time you've used it. Okay, so yeah. eight okay, dice. Um, what about you, Malco? And what are the risks again? Uh, the risks right now are that they're going to deal wounds to you. Okay, because I got four raises. Okay, so you're good. Uh, well, well, we'll calculate all that up in a sec. Malco, what are you going to do? Since we have to, for the dramatic actions, like declare at the same time, how do you sort of hold off to see what's going on? Because I don't feel like I need to jump in and take an action unless these guys are unsuccessful. Uh, so generally, they have everybody declare at the the same time, but you can just decide what order you want to do that in. If you declare and the situation changes, mm -hmm. uh, then you can spend a raise to change what you're doing. I see. I see. Um, I think that he just kind of stays where he is because nobody's approaching him right now, and uh, you know gets ready to deal some violence if he needs to. But um, you know his first plan of action is if these guys start seeming like they are going to uh, you know not be swayed uh, he will stand up and uh, since I have that cover name thing mm -hmm. um, I'll say that you know just like that moment of kneeling down and uh, letting them be a distraction is enough time to let him sort of do the change your stance, change your voice, stand up and suddenly talk like somebody who is one of uh, Zion's more important guests who are here. And okay. he's just going to impersonate somebody. Uh, sure. You spending uh, the hero point to do that. Okay. But that's only if uh, you know he needs to get involved in the first place. Okay. Uh, so uh, generally, uh, uh, we'll, we'll put that to to, to that side. So um, we'll come back to that. We'll see. We'll see what happens here in terms of the other people's stuff. But we know what your skill is. Um, it, it, that looks like it's probably going to be like wits and convince or wits and empathy, right? Yeah, I was actually thinking perform, but they're all zero, so it's okay. Not Neither here nor there. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, what about you, uh, Musira? Um, well, while they're trying to talk them into uh, the, the situation where these people need help, um, I'm going to 
kind of aid by continuing to help these people. Uh, that way it looks like that we're genuine he genuinely here and not just passing through. Uh, I'm not sure what I would roll for that. I'm, I'm thinking convince is probably part of it. Yeah, so I would but say what uh, trait? It could do uh, it could do panache or resolve. I would say. Okay, because I was thinking resolve might be a good fit because I'm I'm kind of uh, holding my own for kind of sticking to the story. Okay, kind of. that. Uh, yeah. That seems fair to me. Now you could also spend hero points to give uh, uh, your companions a bonus dice too. I was going to say, I feel like I'm more there to support what they're doing as opposed to me stepping in. Could I simply sort of lend my voice to hand a hero sure. points worth of three dice to Rashawn? Okay. Uh, give Rashawn, um, give you three extra dice. Um, so uh, I know I've heard that uh, you got uh, four successes, right, Zev? Yeah. Okay. Rashawn, what do you have? Um, well, I rolled before I heard about having those three extra dice, so let me... I have two raises without that. Okay. Um, but I'm going to, like, write let's have down... You, let's have you re-roll. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Um, if that's, that'll be faster. Um, so I just add three more bonus... Three bonus dice. One, yep. two three come on ah, it won't let me do it is there a maximum oh there we go never mind um, well much better there now i got four raises that's eight uh and how many successes did you get uh there uh Mosira? uh three three so eleven um, and how many successes did you get, Malco? He was aiding, right? Yeah, but that's that's uh, that's spending the hero points. It doesn't take an action. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Um. Okay, so here's a question then. Using that cover name, I need to spend a hero point, but instead of you know spending a hero point on that and spend, I'm just you know, more trying to back him up okay. with talk, so it's just me rolling my three dice saying, hey, we're here to help. Okay. Uh, it's the first time uh, you've used uh, <laughs> my zero uh, performance. My zero skill, so that's uh, an extra die for that. And you kind of described how you were helping, so I'll give you the extra die for that. Okay, okay. Holy smokes. So that's actually three successes. Uh, three so raises. That's a total of 14 successes. There are two groups of seven strength each. So you talk them down completely. Uh, if you had, maybe some of them might have, might have hit you before th the situation changed, but they're like, uh, uh, and, and they back off and they'll kind of get in the way um, and kind of turn. And eventually you four can sneak out and get out of here before uh, uh, the, the, the boss, before Zeon realizes what has gone on realizes that the only way this could have happened is if somebody broke into a safe, you know, uh, all of that kind of thing. And, uh, you can, can get out through the gates, um, uh, into the night. You'll probably in the distance here, the screeching of the monkeys, uh, they're throwing, you know, nuts down out of the trees, the guards. Um, and then, uh, the, 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 the guards feel very good about themselves because they let these people from the street help all the servants. Um, and eventually, you're maybe a block away before you hear Zion start shouting. You know, no, they were the thieves. Don't you incompetent fools. They got away. And you can pick up your pace a little bit at that point. And I think that's where we're going to stop for tonight. You have the list of names. Uh, we'll play a little bit with the, the dice system to get a, a sense of that. Um, uh, you, you saw some weird magics. And uh, we will take up next time where we'll uh, look at the stories that you have uh, and uh, we will head to the capital of Anatole Aya to perhaps complete some of those stories. Does that sound good? Yep. Okay. Uh, you can keep your hero points if you have more than uh, uh, hero points.
than than one, then you're starting one, you can keep a hold of those. All right, I'm going to stop the broadcast.